What's going on growers, it's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Now that fall is here, the garden work and maintenance has started to slow down, but that doesn't mean we have to. So today, I wanna to share with you an easy way to convert your kitchen scraps into next year's organic fertilizer by building your own simple homemade vermicompost setup. Let's go. <laughs> Now is a great time to build your own worm bin. This way, when spring rolls around, we'll have some worm castings to add to our garden and we'll be able to make our own vermicompost tea. Most of us still have leftover scraps from our garden. Yeah, we have our compost piles going, but this worm bin is gonna be an additional way to take our waste and allow nature through the worms to convert that into beautiful black gold, perfect for our soil. Building our own vermicompost setup doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be complicated. We don't wanna overthink it too much. What we wanna do is create an ideal environment for these worms to thrive and to decompose our food while also reproducing in there. This way we can add additional bins if we'd like to. What we will need to start our setup is an OPEG storage bin. 18 gallons is about as small as you want to go. We want to have adequate space in there for enough oxygen to get in, which we'll get into even more later. And we're going to need a lid for that and also an additional lid at the bottom or something to catch the worm juice as it drains out. We'll need a drill with a quarter inch bit and you could use nails also to knock in air holes but the drill is going to make it the easiest for you. We're not going to be building a multi-bin system with different tiers. We're just going to keep it simple and effective. This will be cheaper in the long run if we want to add additional totes and additional bins but also it'll be easier to monitor the whole system. I think this is effective too because it's going to be easier to allow the oxygen. By stacking the bins that can reduce some of that oxygen and create anaerobic bacteria which we do not want. That'll really hurt the worms in the long run. The first thing we want to do is drill holes at the bottom of our bin. This way the worm juice can drain out the bottom so it doesn't sit down there and reduce the oxygen and go anaerobic. You'll know it's anaerobic if you get that foul nasty smell. That's not the kind of decomposition that we want. Want. So I'm going to remove this bottom lid as well that's going to catch the juice and just drill a bunch of holes at the bottom here to allow that drainage. You'll notice that I'm drilling these holes at the lowest part. That's where it's going to drain to and I'm also drilling into wood. This way it's just not getting popped through and having to rip it back out. Putting that wood underneath it to drill into makes it a little easier on you. Now that's finished, I put a bunch of them in there. We'd rather have too many than not enough. I'm gonna do the same thing at the top here on the sides to let airflow come in. And then I'm gonna drill the top of the lid as well. Again, I'm gonna be drilling that lid onto the, onto the wood to make it easier for me to go in and out. How many holes you should drill, that's sort of up to you. Just make sure you have enough. You really don't wanna to have too little, especially at the top. These worms, I know I've said it a lot of times, but they need good oxygen. There we go, that's good. A bunch of holes, should be perfect. Now I'm just gonna drill some holes in the side of the bin. You can see what we did with this bin. So we don't wanna go out and buy expensive bins. This thing was like five or six dollars new. I had some older bins, but I just wanted to grab a fresh one just so I can give the worms a nice home and keep it nice and clean for them to start because I didn't want to make sure I had any chemicals or anything in the bin that I was going to use. So let's move on to the next step. Tuck's out here with me today. We're trying to make the most of this nice weather before it starts to get too cold. And the next thing we want to move on to is the bedding for the worm bin where they're going to live. So the most ideal thing to use is some homemade compost, something that's almost finished. That's why I think this time of year is such a good time to build your worm bin. That's what we have here, a bunch of compost. And we want to make sure that the compost isn't hot, that it's not cooking, that could injure the worms. So what I did was I came out the other day and I just separated some compost and then put that in a bin. This way the worms will be okay with the temperature of it. And you don't have to use compost, but this is going to be the most ideal. It's going to provide food for them. It's going to have a nice pH, a nice environment. They're going to be comfortable moving into a place like this. You could start with newspaper and stuff, but you don't want just newspaper when you're first starting. If you don't have homemade compost to use as your bedding, and you're going to be using shredded up newspaper or shredded up cardboard, just make sure you add some garden soil to that to bring some grit in. That will help the worms decompose everything better and will also add some beneficial bacteria, which will help the worms in the long run. One thing that's super important when putting your bedding in is the depth. We don't want it too deep or that'll cut off some oxygen. It'll make everything get a little too dense. That's not what we want. So a good amount is about six to eight inches at the bottom. And your compost, it should have a good earthy smell to it. It shouldn't smell bad. Again, that's that sign of the anaerobic bacteria. So I'm just gonna be adding some of this homemade compost down here to about six to eight inches. 
Then after that, we'll have everything set up where we can start bringing our worms in. Now you may be wondering, where do we get these worms from? And are there are kind of worms that are actually best for this kind of thing? Yes, there are worms that are best, and those are the red wigglers. You can go out to your garden and harvest some of them, but that's going to take a little bit of time. You're going to have to wait for those to reproduce so you can get a full worm bin set, enough to actually decompose a bin like this. The best thing to do, in my opinion, is to start a system, is to order 500 to 1,000 worms for a size like this from a reputable company. And I'm going to start with 1,000. What that's going to do is to get this thing whole kick-started. Once they start really doing well and reproducing, I'll be able to start an additional bin without having to purchase any more worms. And the red wigglers are going to be the best for a number of reasons. One thing is that they actually like staying in the top part of the soil, and they're not territorial like your night crawlers could be. We're almost finished getting this compost transferred from one bin to the next, making sure we're getting the right height, and I'm taking out any of the big sticks and stuff that are in here. And again, how many worms or bins you're going to need is going to be based on how much food you're eating. It's all going to be on weight. So for instance, we're going to start with a thousand red wigglers, which is about one pound. Like I mentioned, they'll eat half of their body weight every single day. So that's about 0.5 pounds of food they'll eat every day. We want to feed these once every week. So that's going to be about 3.5 pounds a week in order to maintain those thousand red wiggler worms. If you are eating less food, then you can go with maybe about 500 worms. And I'm going to be making sure I try to pack the food in here to make sure that they can continue to reproduce and continue to do well. You don't want to put too much in, but it's something you have to learn over time. It's something you'll get a feel for. The worms will actually maintain their population based on how much food and how much space they have. So if you just want to stick with 500, or if you just want to stick with, you know, if you're only producing about half of a pound or a pound of food, then just keep adding that into your bin once a week and your worms will actually start to develop that regulation. They'll regulate themselves and their population based on how much space and how much food you're giving them. I plan on giving them more, as much as they can eat, so they will reproduce quick and I can create more and more bins. We have all the compost transferred in. It looks great. Now it's time to add these worms. We're going to add these thousand. I got them from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. Great reviews, other people said it's a good place to use, so we're going to add these in. They're going to be a little lethargic to start because they spend a few days in the mail. And it's just peat moss, I think, that they're left in here with, just to suck up any moisture. So they're looking okay. We're getting some good movement, which is always a good sign. They should really enjoy this compost. And for the first week or so, I'm not going to be adding any additional food because I want them to get used to their new home. Almost like what happens when you transfer a plant or you transplant. What happens is it takes a little bit for them to adjust. So I want to make sure the worms can adjust. In this compost, there's going to be plenty of food for them to snack on. And then in a week, I'll come and I'll start feeding them some kitchen scraps. I'm not going to feed them whole scraps. I'm going to cut them up or I'm going to probably blend them. That's the easiest for them to digest. What I'll do is come on one side, take the blended food scraps and dump them right here and then cover them. It'll take them a good week to eat those scraps. And again, how much food they can actually process, it's going to be dependent on a number of things. For instance, a newer bin like this is going to take a little while for them to start really uh, thriving and really decomposing those scraps quickly. So once I get a feel for it is how I'm going to adjust it. I want to make sure I can reproduce as many worms in here as possible though, so I can build more bins. So we're going to push the envelope, but we don't want food sitting in here for longer than a week because it'll start to get fungus and that's not what we want. The worms are in. You'll notice that I didn't mix them up. I just laid them over top. They'll naturally go down and burrow into the bedding. They'll enjoy it. You saw that it's not super wet. It's moist because these worms need moisture, but it's not super, super wet. It's not soggy. We don't want that. And when I do put the food scraps in, the blended scraps, I'm just going to bury a small hole and then cover it with about an inch of mulch for the worms on one side, let them migrate over, eat all that, and then a week later, I'll do it on the other side. One thing to think about is the worms, they're not going to eat the vegetable seeds. That's just part of nature. That's part of what's ingrained into them. So when you put your worm castings out, you may have some things popping up, some tomato seeds and some seeds from other plants. So just keep an eye on that. When it comes to temperature, these worms are going to want to be in a spot that's about 50 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit to maintain that temperature. You don't want it super hot, super cold, so I'm going to bring them into the garage, which I have one side which is kind of heated. It'll be the perfect ideal temperature for them. 
So what I'll do is pop the lid on and then put that base underneath it, let the worms settle in and let them start going to work and doing what they do best. A few things you don't want to feed to your worms are fatty foods, foods that are salty, anything with really vinegar in it, or even citrus because the citrus is actually going to be antimicrobial and these worms like eating food that is breaking down that's rotting. If you're finding that you can't keep up with how much the worms are eating then a good thing you can do is go to your local coffee shop and get some coffee grounds. The worms will eat those and you could also go around and harvest some leaves locally. That's why I think right now is a great time to build your bin because people are going to start raking up their leaves around here, putting them in bags. So I'll go around, grab some of those bags and store them. This way I can keep these worms well fed. I'll be honest with you and most of you already know this, but what I think is the most efficient and effective way to farm worms is to do it naturally in your own garden with a thick organic matter mulch. Let the worms just come in like they would and constantly be working for you. I don't think the compost bin is a bad idea though, I think it's a great idea. And one of the reasons I wanted to start it was so I can make use of those kitchen waste that I have without having to come out to my regular compost pile when it's cold and deal with it like that. But also, I want to get that worm casting so I can make some worm compost tea, which is going to be so beneficial for my garden next year. I'm going to be spraying it on my plants as a foliar feed, um, putting it down low, and just using those worm castings in my raised bed too. So I think it's a great addition. I don't think it's something that can supply two food forests like I have, but working in combination with having the worms work naturally out here and then having them work inside for me, I think that's just going to be great. I think it's going to be beneficial, and I think it's something that you know, any true gardener loves to do. They love to take advantage of things like kitchen waste and converting that into gold, into soil fertility, into something that's gonna grow more and more food for us. The worms have been in here for a few minutes. I wanted to show you how they've migrated down. You don't see much up top here anymore as I move. There's some squirming around there, but they're settling down. They're starting to move into the compost too. So they're really gonna love this stuff. And I'm excited to give them a nice home. We're going to be waiting a week, like I said, till I give them food, but soon I'll update you guys later and then I'll be expanding, adding more and more bins. Okay, a few days have passed and the worms are well adjusted to the new location. Now I'm going to be adding some food. If you just started with newspaper or cardboard, you want to make sure you put the food in right when you get the worm bin starting. They have to have something to eat. But because I have this compost in, this allowed them to have adequate food while they were adjusting to their new home. The worms are doing real well. The dryness up top here is still some of that peat moss from the initial pouring in, but the worms are all scattered through here. Really enjoying the soil consistency, or the compost. Again, homemade compost is gonna be your best bet to start, but you can start with newspaper scraps and cardboard, things like that. So the worms are down there working. Now that a few days have passed, I'm gonna pour some food scraps in. Just dig a little down like that, like I did. And then we're gonna pour these blended up scraps. We blend these up. This is going to make it a lot easier for the worms to digest. Pour it right in there. It'll help keep the moisture content pretty high too. If it's too wet in there, add some newspaper. If it's not wet enough, then you might want to add a little moisture or some water. We'll just cover that back up. Just like that. And then in about a week or so, we'll put food on this side and then cover that up. We'll just keep alternating side to side. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Hope you got encouraged, inspired to get out there, to get your own worm bin started. This way you can take what most people see as waste and convert them to soil fertility. Convert it into food for you. Convert it to something that benefits actually all of us. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. Talking James will be back to you with another one real soon. We out.